Welcome to the Woman Warriors Podcast, where we're working to help you call a truce with your anxiety. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here's your host, Elizabeth Cush, LCPC. Hi, and welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. I am your host, Elizabeth Cush, and I am a licensed clinical professional counselor in Annapolis, Maryland, where I help clients who struggle with anxiety and stress and feeling overwhelmed find more calm and peace in their life. Right now, doing all of those sessions virtually and um, due to licensing regulations, I can see clients who are in Maryland only at this time, but I am looking toward broadening my practice into some coaching, uh, that like non-therapy, but coaching to help women find their voices in relationship, but really finding their voice inside. I will keep you posted about that as it develops. For now, you can find us at womanwarriors.com. You can also sign up for the newsletter for Women Warriors and not miss a single episode of the podcast and get my blog. So you will get a bi-monthly newsletter, twice a month newsletter. And also uh, I have a free guide for meditation. So if you are a woman who feels like you can't fit meditation into your life, you just don't have the time or there there isn't that structure that you can build into your life around meditation because it feels like it's too much. Or if you feel like your brain just doesn't ever turn off and that you will never be able to meditate, this guide is for you. Or if you just want to get started in a meditation practice, this guide is for you. You can get started meditating in three to five minutes a day. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Today, my guest is Michael Spencer. She is a virtual home energy coach and a Reiki practitioner who helps soulful, sensitive people declutter their homes to create space for what truly matters. She is the creator of a high vibration method of decluttering called home energy purification, which incorporates intuition, mindfulness, and energy work into the process. Michael is the founder of Let's Purify, her online coaching business, and she's also the host of the Let's Purify podcast. I'm very excited about this conversation about being more aligned with our home and the stuff in our homes. So let's get started. Hi, Michael, and welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Biz. It's great to be here. Uh, so, so great. Like you said, it's so fun to talk to other podcasters, but also I just love having more in-depth conversations with the people I've met through social media and online and feel like, I, I, you know, I'm like, I feel like maybe there's a connection there, but there's so much, there's not a whole lot of depth potentially that we get into in our, in our smaller groups where we know each other. I'm just so excited to have you here. Well, I am really excited to be here. I love your podcast and what you're doing in the world, and it's great to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. So if you wouldn't mind telling the audience, the listeners, a little bit about you and what inspired you to do the work that you do. Yeah, absolutely. I am a virtual home energy coach. And what that means is I help people to transform the energy of their lives and their homes through a very unique practice of home decluttering. And I call this practice purification, and it incorporates not only the practical and logistical aspects of decluttering, it also incorporates intuition and mindfulness, energy tools and spiritual practices, so that it becomes a really in-depth and expansive process of self-exploration 
so that you know you not only get your home decluttered, which so many people are yearning for, you right. also get to have a much better understanding of yourself and the things that you choose to carry with you in your life, what you choose to hold on to, what you choose to let go. And so often, a lot of those decisions are made subconsciously or unconsciously. So it's really bringing a lot of that up to the surface and exploring it together as you um, actually go through the process of decluttering. Yeah. And yeah, and I just, um, it's something that I, it, it is a journey that I went on personally, you know, in my own home, I was on a spiritual journey and really um, going through, this is, you know, an ongoing practice of spiritual awakening. And I realized at one point that the, some of the belongings in my home were no longer really resonating with me. And this started actually causing some just general discomfort, um, maybe a little bit of anxiety, because every time I would try to, using old decluttering methods, I just couldn't do it. And so, you know, I would get overwhelmed. I would get kind of flooded with confusion. You know, should I keep this? Should I let it go? And so then what I did, what most people do is I put the lid back on the box, put the box back in the closet, closed the door, walked away. And yet, even though I couldn't see those belongings that I really wanted to sort through, I knew they were still there. And so it was nagging at the back of my mind and heart. Um, And it started to get a little bit louder. And so I knew I needed to do something to be able to work through this. And I had this inspiration to blend my spiritual practices with this work Hmm. and Yeah. And as I started really tuning in more with my intuition and bringing mindfulness, and I also have a background as a mental health counselor and I'm a former licensed professional counselor. And so I was able to bring a lot of those calming and grounding skills in as well so that I could stay present in my body as I was exploring my relationship with these belongings. And Mm -hmm. I knew at some point in that process, I was like, wow, I want to do this work with other people. I want to share this with the world because it was, you know, going through particularly the items in one closet. And -hmm. then I eventually went through every single belonging in my home and, you know, the shared belongings that my husband and I have together, we went through together. And that was a beautiful process too. Um, Doing that, was hands down to that point in my life, the most liberating experience. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to make these very clear decisions of, yes, I want this. I want this in my home. I want this in my space. And no, I do not want that. That needs to Mm -hmm. go. I don't want to live with it anymore. I don't want to carry it around anymore. And so rather than getting caught up in what would my family think, what does society say, I was able to just root into my intuition, my soul, and and be able to get very clear and say, yes, I want this. No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of, if you don't mind describing, because your your podcast and your business is about this, let's purify, let's use sort of this energy, let us feel more edit, energetically aligned with our home and our belongings. But like, why is that so important? Why does that matter to be feeling more energetically balanced? Well, first and foremost, our homes are our sanctuaries. They're our place where we can take shelter from the outside world. And if our homes are filled up with lots of old belongings or new belongings that we feel conflicted about, and whether that conflict is very conscious, you know, every time you walk into a room, you just feel heavy and maybe frustrated or angsty or anxious because, oh, I just don't, that belonging just doesn't, just doesn't jive with me. Or if it's on a much more subtle, deep level, like I was saying, like I can close the door of that closet and yet there's just something nagging 
There's just mm-hmm. something there, even if it's not, you know, constantly on my mind consciously. It's what that does is it creates an energy leak or maybe mm. multiple energy leaks. And so here we are in this place that is our refuge from the other things that are happening in the world. It's our safe place. This is our place to rest, to relax, to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And if we ultimately on a a very deep level, if there's something that doesn't feel safe or comfortable about that because of this inner conflict with these unresolved relationships with our belongings, then we're kind of negating the, Mm -hmm. the joy that we can have from being in our homes. Yeah. Yeah. And so just having that, as you said, I think when you were talking about just these things that were sort of hanging there that just left you feeling like either, uh, or I don't know, just nothing about them. (laughs) You know, there was no sense of really wanting that to be in your home can just make you feel less aligned, less, less at ease in your own home. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that alignment piece too, when we think about carrying things around over our lifetime. So, you know, I work with clients and I had in my own experience, we may be holding on to things for now I'm 42. So I had things that were from my birth. You Mm -hmm. know, I had birth announcements that my mom had saved for me and that was beautiful. And and by no means, I don't suggest anyone like just get rid of all your old stuff. That is not what purifying is about at all. It's Mm -hmm. about getting clear. Does this serve me? Does it serve who I'm becoming now? Does it support Mm -hmm. the vision of, of where I'm going? And so if we're carrying these things around that represent old roles that we were in, maybe old relationships old beliefs, old values that no longer fit, that no longer align, it, it can really cause a lot of disharmony mm. in our daily existence. And again, sometimes this is quite conscious and on the surface, and other times it's happening on a subtle level that we don't really realize how potent it is until we get into it. Yeah. Well, and, and, to me, like we, the home I live in with my husband, it's a much smaller version of the home we raised our children in, but there was a lot of stuff that came with us that from that other mm-hmm. house and sat in our basement up until I think this past winter where we were like, you know what, like it's been in the basement for five years we need to go through these boxes. It was so hard for me. I was so territorial. I was assuming my husband was just going to be like, throw it all away. And he was actually very kind and helped me (laughs) through the process. But I had such an emotional reaction. It gave me a lot of anxiety, which I was able to name in the moment, fortunately, but it was hard. Yes, it, it is because these these things, these belongings that we accumulate over time have meaning for us. They carry energy, there's emotional attachment, there's memories, there's nostalgia. Um, if you don't mind me asking, like, mm-hmm. what do you think it was for you? Um, was there anything in particular that you're like, oh, it was, it was X, Y, Z that made me have such a hard time going through these things? Yeah. Well, the one thing that really um, comes to mind was for one, like I had this internal, like already already envisioned plan about what we would be going through. And my husband started with like this other set of boxes that is, is actually filled with like the kids confirmation, you know, Mm -hmm things, baptism candles and things I had set aside from the other house that I felt like, at least I still feel right now are sacred. I'm like, you don't touch those, those stay there. Um, And once we talked through that, I was like, well, do you mind, like, start with the suitcases. Like, if you don't mind starting with things that I have no emotional attachment to, I'm okay with that, if that makes sense. 
Absolutely. And I love that. And thank you. I, I know I just sort of sprung that on you. So I appreciate oh, that's okay. you no, sharing no that. No worries. Um, because, you know, that's exactly what happens with a lot of people is when we're going through the things that have um, a strong memory associated with them, or like you said, these are sacred things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's so important when we're sorting through those. And let me interrupt myself. I love that. It's like, okay, let's not go through that right now. Let's go through some of the things that are easier, the things that don't have the same level of charge to them, because then you can start to get, you kind of get your groove on, you know, Mm -hmm. and you start to go, oh, okay. Yes. This is more clear. We can let this go. We can keep this. And then, and I, I call this, um, developing our intuitive sorting skill. Hmm. So we're learning to tune in internally to, you know, what feels right to keep, what feels right to let go. And it's beautiful to be able to do this in partnership, you know, with, with a spouse or partner or other family member too. And, and then when we start to get into those things that are more sacred or more sentimental then we've warmed up a little bit and then you Mm -hmm. can also start to bring in, you know, other purification tools when you get familiar with, with that specific process that can really help it be a sacred process. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to feel like anything's being ripped away or that something's happening that could feel um, on a low level, even traumatic. Yes. It's like, oh, this is a beautiful thing. We get to revisit these memories. We get to honor what happened and we get to get clear. Maybe the box of those old things of the kids just gets to be repacked and it gets to stay right where it is. Or maybe some things get to be distributed to the kids themselves, or maybe some things get to be brought out and you know something gets to be framed and put on the wall. So mm-hmm. there's so much creativity that can happen when we can get out of that anxious and fearful place. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, <laughs> I credit the work that I've done for myself around my own anxiety that helped me be able to say to him like, Versus, you know, in the past, maybe just getting angry and him storming out and saying, I'm not helping with this because you're being obstructive. You know, it was, I was able to say, okay, I'm not ready for that yet, but Mm -hmm. I can do this. And then he was like, okay, you just needed a project, you know, he was fine. Right. Right. He's like, I'm ready to do something. And you're like, okay, let's, let me help direct into where I'm also ready. Okay. Let's do it. Exactly. So I, yeah, but I would imagine that obviously, I mean, to me, it feels obvious that anxiety can play a huge part in the, the approaching even where, where do I start? What do I decide to get rid of? How do I go about this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I think a lot of times um, there are a couple of things. I think the anxiety sometimes comes from the volume of stuff. You know, sometimes yes, people yes. have so much, yeah. and then our anxiety, and, and sometimes there's legitimately a huge volume. So yes. that is what it is. And then sometimes our anxiety, as you know, can make it look even bigger. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yes. so it's really easy to just shut down. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing is that with home decluttering and purifying is that often until there is a either a crisis point or a, a strong, strong desire. So maybe there's a desire to move or maybe something has happened and, and you have to move quickly. Um, a lot of times it's not necessary for our day-to-day living Mm -hmm. for us to declutter because, you know, unless, you know, maybe you have a basement that you want to transform into a rec room or some other type of place until that desire gets stronger than the inconvenience of having the stuff there. It's like, oh, this is something that's kind of easy to just ignore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And when we ignore it, as you know, when we close that basement door, attic door, shed door, closet door, put the lid on the box, it temporarily eases that anxiety. Mm-hmm. And 
Of course, it, the anxiety never really goes away though. And that's another one of those energy leaks that happens because when we know that there's something we need and want to address and the thought of addressing it gets us really um, anxious and scared and worried and we just keep trying to put the lid on it, it takes so much energy to hold that lid on, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And yeah. so- yeah. Yeah, it, um, it certainly can stir up a lot. And, and so there's not only the facing the volume, there's also, you know, how much time is it going to take? And that can feel very stressful for people. Mm. Yes. And then what am I going to have to face? Right. What, right. what, what memories, mm-hmm. what past experiences, what shame, Right. What, you know, what failure Mm. um, has, has gotten buried in all of this. Yeah. And I feel like that shame piece is so, could be so like that in itself would Mm -hmm. easily stop you in your tracks. Like if Mm -hmm. I don't have to face that pile of whatever that closed, that, that closet, that room, that whatever, that space, then I'll just feel better, even though, as you said, it's an energy leak because you're using all that energy to keep all that mm-hmm. stuff, cl- you know, s- stored away. Yeah, it's, a, it's oh. a high price to pay. And yet, as we know, shame is such a painful emotion and, and energetic experience that we will go to great lengths to avoid facing it. Mm-hmm. And so wh- how do you help, you know, clients become more energy, energetically aligned. I mean, I know you said using mindfulness and their intuition, but how, how do you help your clients sort of tap into that for themselves if they're not familiar with that? Yeah. So first I always like to encourage people to start small. And now I have a, a 12 week program that I work you know, and I do all my work virtually. So I'm not actually in the home with folks. And I do that intentionally. Number one, it's helpful for me because I have access to more people when Mm -hmm. I don't have to travel to them. And it also helps my clients to feel more empowered to really dive in and do the work and develop the skills rather than developing a sense of um, depending on someone else to come in. Now, I just want to say as a caveat, there are lots of declutterers and organizers who will come in and do that work in home with a person. And sometimes that's exactly what a client needs. Mm -hmm. And so if someone listening is saying, yeah, but I really want somebody to be there with me, that's wonderful. And it's important to seek out um, exactly the type of support that you're looking for. Where I really come in is helping to work through those blocks that are kind of keeping you from getting started, creating a really solid plan. And so some of the things that we do early on in that program are to create a plan. Mm -hmm. So um, we do an exercise called a mindful walkthrough Mm -hmm. where my clients just start by walking through the home. And just spending some time in each space, maybe it might be two minutes, it might be a half an hour, you know, whatever it is that a person needs just to feel what it feels like in each space and kind of taking in, okay, what what do I feel in this space? Because sometimes we might be surprised at the places that actually feel really good to us. Hmm. versus the places that are like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to be in this room for more than 10 seconds. Um, And so we just, it's starting at that kind of taking that energetic inventory, that emotional inventory, and just noticing, okay, what's here? And practicing with some mindfulness, uh, accepting what is here. Hmm. And that, you know, it took a long time for these belongings to accumulate the way that they did. And that's okay. And it is going to take some time to unwind that. And that's okay too. And it's really also around creating some reasonable 
expectations. Mm. You know, this, there, you know, I think there's a time and a place for the running a dumpster and, (laughs) you know, getting her done, you know, some, sometimes whether it's a huge time constraint or some other um, big factor that's saying, okay, that this is just what we have to do. And this is the way we have to do it. Um, If you can avoid doing that, if you have some sensitivity around this, um, and, and like we were saying, like that shame or maybe embarrassment or fear and anxiety, it's really beautiful to make this as um, integrated as possible, like integrated with one's energy field and one's inner experience, because mm-hmm. there is really an inner purification that's happening as the outer purification is happening. And so if we can do that in a way that feels aligned and that feels really good and safe, Mm-hmm. then it can help us to uh, incorporate and and kind of integrate the lessons about like what has accumulated so that we can develop some new habits around yeah. our stuff too. Yeah. 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 I was going to say too, just that you, you know, describing um, walking through your home and, just sort of feeling what it feels like to be in that room or with that stuff. That's an interesting, I was sort of visualizing for myself, like in my house, like what are the rooms that I walk into and go, Oh, (laughs) I don't want to be in here. And you know, it's a, it's an interesting exercise. Surprising, little surprising. Yeah. And, and then from there, and it really is. And because we spend so much time in our homes Mm-hmm. And we're often, you know, moving from room to room and we may be very purpose oriented when we're in a room, you know, when we're in the kitchen, we're cooking or we're eating or we're looking for something to eat. We're reading the mail when we're in our offices, we're paying the bills, we're doing work and we don't often give ourselves the time to just be in those yeah. spaces. Yeah. yeah. You know, just looking, hearing, sensing, feeling. Mm. Hmm. What's it like to be here? Yeah, and boy, we are spending way more time in our home right now. At least yes. I know I am, which mm-hmm. is good and bad. But um, so if there were uh, some small steps that people could take, listeners, you know, after hearing our conversation said, okay, maybe I can go into a room and get this feeling of, you know, I don't like the way this room is. What are some small steps that can help them feel more energetically aligned or purified in those spaces? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there are a couple of different directions to go. Number one, you might start with this interesting. I have a podcast episode. I don't remember what number it is, but it's about a three-step daily purifying ritual Mm. where you can pick a an area. I love to do it with the surface of my desk and also with our kitchen island. Those are two places that things tend to accumulate. And yeah. when they do, that's it feels real jangly for me energetically, like just a lot of disarray. And so to develop, and it doesn't need to be a daily um, ritual. I just some for some folks that will work well. For other people, maybe it's once a week or as needed. And that's a good way to just start the you know the three steps. Now, now I have to challenge myself and make sure I remember them. <laughs> the three steps are you know to center and breathe and ground, mm-hmm. and then to actually go through you know putting things away, replacing things. Um, you know, getting the the space cleared and organized. And then what I might call blessing the space or um, connecting with an intention for the space. So if it's your uh, office, maybe it's, you know, I want to feel really productive and at ease when Mm -hmm. I'm in this space. And, And so then you might do something like Um, if, if listeners burn sage or something to clear energy or, um, really anything, you know, putting a special object on there that helps anchor in a particular emotion or energetic quality that you'd like to feel when you're there. Yeah. So, you know, before like rushing off and opening up the lids to all the boxes, 
these are small things that we can do on a regular basis to start honing our sensitivity, remembering to calm and ground and breathe Mm -hmm. and, and just really being centered. Um, there's another podcast episode about when a, what I call a micro area of our home becomes massively aggravating. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, there is this basket that I use every single day. And I talk about it in this episode, um, where the belongings in here, you know, I had like my vitamins and, you know, I don't know, there's like salt and pepper in there. It's in our kitchen. Like everything's in there. Every time I would open it or every time I would grab something out of there, things would fall over. It was so annoying. And this is something that I use on a daily basis. So these are also beautiful places to start with your purifying because it's something that you will notice an immediate positive effect when you shift the energy of it. And then also practically and logistically, you shift something about it. So maybe every time you go to your bookshelf and pull a book off, your books are more organized. So the whole, you know, a whole stack of things doesn't fall down. Right, right. Yeah, I'm thinking about this. We have these two little containers on our uh, kitchen island that hold like a flashlight for when you walk the dog in the dark, sunglasses Mm -hmm. so you can grab them before you walk out the door, probably like extra keys. And it's every time you pick one thing up, like three things fall out. (laughs) Exactly. I'm like, like, that would be a perfect place to start for me. (laughs) There's your micro area. (laughs) And then, you know, as a person is ready, I think it's, you know, if a person's getting to a point where they want to purify a whole room or they're ready to just, you know, they, they want to do what I call a full home experience. I think it's really centering in on why do I want to do this? Why is it important to me right now? Because chaos will ensue. You know, when you start taking the lids off those boxes, when you start taking everything off a shelf, when you start emptying drawers, it is going to get intense because you're shaking up. Like not only are you causing that visual disruption, it energetically, you're moving all that energy, which is so good and so purifying. And it's important to be connected with that deeper inner purpose because otherwise it's very easy to get, you know, a little bit of the ways in and just go, forget it. This is too much. I'm just stuffing everything back in here, closing the drawer and leaving the room immediately. Yeah. Or just leaving it all pulled out and closing mm-hmm. the door. Right? So yes. they never want to approach it. <laughs> exactly. And the more of those experiences we have, the more we can feel um, this sense of, oh, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the more times we feel like we haven't been successful with something, the more challenging it is to try again. Yeah. So really getting in tune with what, if you are planning to do a bigger, yeah, like whole house thing, really getting yourself prepared, but also understanding what your, what your goals are, I guess, or, you know, what your intentions are for that. Absolutely. I'm really glad that you said it that way too, because sometimes a person may start with this idea that I want to do my whole home. This is exactly what I need. And then when the conversation deepens, it might be, you know, the basement really isn't all that problematic right now. What I really, really need to focus on is that guest bedroom. That's mm-hmm. the thing. And for some people, they may get into doing, you know, their original intention is I need to do the guest bedroom and it blossoms naturally into the whole house needs to right. be addressed. Right. And so it's being really flexible and not rigid, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work physically to move all your stuff around. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tremendously taxing emotionally, mentally, energetically. And so it's okay. If one starts out with this grand idea of doing a whole home and then it's like, actually this year, I'd be happy if I could get through the living areas. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So how do people 
find you and your podcast and if people were interested in working with you. And I will, if you send me the links to those two episodes, I will include them in the show notes, you know, after this. But uh, yeah, so how do people find you? Yeah, thank you. I would love it if those episodes were accessible for our listeners. Yeah. And yeah, so my podcast is called the Let's Purify Podcast. And that's a really beautiful way for folks to just start to get a better understanding of what all this purification stuff is about. I have done interviews with several people about their own personal stories. And then I do a bunch of episodes, you know, just kind of talking about the process and teaching and um, just helping people to get more clear about the practical things that they can do to be purifying in their homes. And Mm -hmm. this year we've been um, doing a little bit deeper dive into the inner purification. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, yeah, so that's the Let's Purify podcast, and that can be found on pretty much any podcast player, and it's also on my website, and my nice. website is letspurify.energy, and so that's a little bit different. It is not a .com. It's letspurify.energy. Okay. And on there, folks can see that I have a single session. It's 80 minutes. It's called Clarify to Purify. So this is a great way to dip one's toes into working with me. So we can cover many, many different things in a single session like that. And I send out afterwards uh, a summary of what we've talked about. And there's also a workbook with some initial exercises to help you get started. There's actually an exercise in there about your why, you know, why is this so important? There's Mm -hmm. an exercise about um, how is all this stuff impacting your life force energy? And doing an exploration where we were talking about those energy leaks. So that's a really neat starting point. And then I do have this 12-week program that I usually, um, it's 12 sessions with me. And then I usually give folks 15 weeks to complete that because it's, it, like I said, it can be a very intense process. Um, having that 12 to 15 weeks to work together. We meet weekly for 45 to 50 minute sessions, um, either over the phone or virtually um, on the computer, on a video conference. Mm -hmm. And so that gives us the opportunity to just be checking in and seeing like what's working, what isn't. And I also have a really comprehensive written program Um, One of my clients, every time she would be working on something, she would be like, oh, what says in the book, la, la, la. (laughs) So it's definitely not a book. And uh, maybe it will be someday. That really, you know, depending on the type of learner a person is and the type of um, way that they might want to engage in this work, the, the program, the written program really gives people a beautiful scaffold and, you know, things to be working on and developing within themselves. Um, as well as some of the practical and logistical parts of the process. Nice. So that um, the mindful walkthrough that I talked about is in there. There's also, you know, doing an inventory of your stuff. And, mm. you know, so it gets a, you can get a sense of how important certain things are to prioritize. And yeah, well, yeah. And I would imagine for, for your clients, then, you know, after your conversations like that, one client, they have a resource to go to if there Mm -hmm. were, they, yeah, something they either didn't take notes on or whatever, that there's, that that that's there for them too. Yeah. And it is really neat to, to be able to go back to some of those exercises down the road. You know, if you've done, this is the other thing about purifying and doing a really deep dive into that home experience is that it comes in layers and mm-hmm. just like therapeutic work comes in layers, this is very therapeutic when we approach it this way. And so the first time through, it may be like, uh, I am not going anywhere near that closet. Right. And then, you know, <laughs> after you start building some confidence, you may even start to get excited mm-hmm. about like, okay, I'm ready. Now I want to, now I want to do that. And once you start building some more skills and going, oh, I know. I know how I can approach that in a more soft way, in a gentle way that helps me to feel like I'm in control of the situation. It's just, it's truly magical. Yeah. I know because our house is small each season, I actually have to 
empty a closet and then put new stuff in, you know, I have to mm -hmm. shift from a storage closet to a, you know, to my actual closet. And yeah. it's always an opportunity to look at, sit with, try back on, you know, are these things I'm going to keep or not? And when it's done, like I always dread it because it's <laughs> a lot of work. As you said, it's like pulling stuff out and it's a big pile and it's a mess, but when it's done to look at my closet all neat and tidy and with things hopefully that I've saved that I love, like it's such mm -hmm. a great feeling. Oh, it really is. And there's that sense of alignment then. Yes. yes. You know, when you're feeling, when you open that closet and you see things reflected back to you that you are a yes for, that you mm -hmm. want in your life, that you want to wear, that you feel good about, mm -hmm. that's that beautiful alignment. And then for that time period, then you're opening that door and you're not feeling anxious. Right, right. There yeah. isn't this, yeah, not closing the door on all the things that are ready to fall out or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Michael, this was so great. I really, really enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about you and your business and uh, the whole purifying process. Thank you, Biz. Thanks for having me. I'm so great. It was uh, right before the interview. I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I get to share this work with another group of people who maybe haven't heard of it yet. And so yeah. thanks for this opportunity to share with your tribe. Oh, absolutely. And I think it will really, really resonate just based on the work I do with clients, you know, one on one and how much anxiety can come up around stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and our homes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, thanks again. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Michael. Her process really resonates with me in that it feels as if she's really helping us, helping uh, her clients feel comfortable even when the process might feel uncomfortable, if that makes sense. That decluttering or, or going through the rooms in our home and finding those spaces, whether they're micro spaces or a whole room or the whole home, like that can be a very challenging process, but it really sounds as if her method is very gentle and um, allows us to feel how hard it is and yet gives us a space to approach it anyway. And to me, I am all about that. I am all about allowing the feelings, allowing the discomfort to be there, and yet giving ourselves the space to approach those hard things anyway. Because that's what's important. That's what's honoring who we are. That's honoring our voice, our intuition, our internal energy to guide us. And that is so important. So, so, so important. And what I hope to bring into my program going forward with coaching women, building a better relationship with their anxiety so they can unleash that warrior within. So I so appreciate your joining me in this episode. I appreciate your listens, your reviews, your continuing to come back and tune in. So much gratitude. I hope that you all have a, an energetically aligned week and maybe you will find that micro space in your house that you can declutter and purify so that you don't feel aggravated every time you pull that pen out of the drawer and 17 things fall on the floor. That sounds like my house. You can find all the information on how to uh, contact or find Michael's work and her podcast in the show notes. Ciao for now from This Woman Warrior. Thanks for listening and subscribing to The Woman Warriors podcast. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guests' profiles at womanwarriors.com.